the fire of God. Uh, see, uh, we had a, I, I'm going to tell you one of our event things. Uh, as soon as I said that, a whole bunch of them popped in my mind. But, but uh, let me just tell you one of them. Holy Ghost. Oh, it's okay. So we're going one, two, and three. There we go. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Now I got cord. Thanks. There you go. Now you got all the cord you need. Everything's good, sir. Holy Ghost and fire. Shot they by. Just got to keep it up because they fussy about that. Holy Ghost. Shot the lava. So. I was in this meeting because in, in, the, in the late 90s, we had, uh, uh, okay, I don't know how to say it to you. I don't want to, it's going to sound prideful to you, but if I talk, it's going to sound that way. Uh, God, God, just, God just likes us, and I'm grateful for that. I don't even know how we got him to like us. Uh, I believe it's probably his plan totally. I don't really think I have a whole lot to do with it. It's just like I happen to be in locations when he does stuff. And, and then we get blamed for it, and it has nothing to do with us. But we just were in the same area when it blew up and heaven won. Uh, and so, I don't know, it's just hard to say stuff out of your mouth without people think that, we're just boasting, um, and I'm not. I, I really, like I started out last night, if you want to go to hell, I'll get the door for you. I, I do not give a flip if you're going to be obnoxious and rude and a sinner. I, that's on you. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to. I choose not to. I don't curse you because you do. I don't blame you for making worldly choices. Some of them are pretty awesome to the flesh. They're just wrong. Okay, so. <laughs> so let me go on and follow with this. So I have never, now we've been, we, okay, I'll, I'll do it. All right. I come from a pretty strict uh, conservative background um, um, I didn't know I didn't know the world at all uh, when I ran into it, and it ate me up pretty good. Um, and then Jesus had to do a miracle to get me out of it. He did, and then he set my wife and I on course to do some jobs for him, and so we're still doing that today. All right, we're still on course. In Jesus' name we are. I hope, boy, I hope so, man. After all this stuff we go through. Okay, so, <laughs> so, okay. So, we got out there and started confronting these rebel groups and seeing some atrocities and saw God overcome them. One, one rebel group thing, we won because of the commander of the whole army his wife had a baby, and instead of birthing out, it birthed in. And so the, the, all the placenta went on her organs. And okay, so she got gangrene immediately. That's where, where we live. That's how it goes. And where you live, that does happen here as well, but you have about a five-hour window to get to a hospital, and you can get help. But for us, there's no help, there's no hospital. Okay, so this commander, even though he, see, he thinks he's got rights to do what he's doing, he, he believes he's making a change and a help, and it's a lot of bloodshed and so forth, but he believes he's right. So, but when that happened, now, he has been one of our main persecutors for a number of years because of me, because of the color of my skin and the nation I was birthed in, all right? And so, so uh, he kidnapped one of our pastors uh, in his area, which he had, been, he had already put us in jail over and over and over and over, and we got out and got out and got out. But uh, this pastor went to his, uh, uh, you know, they took him by, by, at gunpoint 
And when he got to the commander, they had, like you see on TV, they do put the thing over your head and they do uh, strip you naked and run you through woods. It, uh, it is that way. And so when he got to the, to the commander's army post, the, they, you know, put, put a, a, thing, a, thing, a towel around him in a, a, a wrap, a, a cloth, and then they told him, like, now, the reason we captured you, now, now I understand this is really, you don't have uh, uh, anywhere to absorb this. Okay, so their next statement is, my wife is dying, you're going to heal her. Okay, now you just got kidnapped in the middle of the night, and you got stripped naked, and you got humiliated, and you got drugged through the jungle, and you got all this stuff. They expect you to still be a Christian and do your job. Hello? And, and what I noticed about most modern Christianity is you drive up to Walmart and somebody quick goes in your parking lot. And that's, that's, that's a gun battle scene right there, buddy. And both parties are Christians. <laughs> so so our, our idea of Christianity might be a little different than yours. Okay? Hello? All right. And I'm not cursing you or them. I'm just telling you, Jesus is king. We need more Christians around. All right. Okay, so he he's sitting there. You know, he's bewildered. He's, he's caught off course. He's, uh, you know he don't want to pray for somebody. He wants to pick up a machete and fight. You know that. That is what's called human nature. But godly nature is different than that. So we have to overcome evil with what? So how in the world, when you've been kidnapped, drug through the woods and you know all that stuff, how do you overcome evil with good when you inside are humiliated, trashed, bummed out, the whole deal? And it wasn't just one parking lot, it was like a dozen parking lots got took from you, you know? All right, so... Here's what he said. Now, this is going to throw you off the trail also because our Christianity is, uh, we believe that Jesus is king and I don't owe you a flipping thing. There you go. See, you believe because you tossed a $5 bill in there, I'm either, I got to run off cancer or I'm a false prophet. I believe you keep the $5 and die and go to hell. How about that? I don't like that. Don't talk to me like that. Take your five bucks and leave. I, hey, there's another Christianity out here that can, in the middle of this kind of stress and drama and trauma, can overcome evil with good. And we have to, we have to walk in that. And, and I'm not very good at it. You hear how aggressive I am. I'm still aggressive, man. I'm 70 years old. I'm still aggressive. All right. It's my environment I live in. They're just aggressive. That's what you eat for breakfast, dinner, and supper. You become what you eat, I tell you. And so, so, and I do love them because I'm still there. And they are my enemies, so there you have it. So my, my, he's a head pastor now. He wasn't at the time, but he is now. He goes, he goes, okay. What's going to happen if I don't pray for it? Well, we're going to shoot you. He said, pull the trigger. Okay, see, your world and your little love your enemy, sloppy agape idea of what Christianity is, thinks that guys like me owe you. First of all, you never saved me. You shunned me when I was a bad guy. You were afraid of me, so you walked on the other side of the street. You abused me and my family. You did a lot of things. And now that I'm gifted from God, you want me to do stuff just because you snapped your finger. Me nor God does that. You know how I can tell? Because all them pets you have at the house, all them sicknesses and diseases and lack and want, It ain't working for you. So I need you to listen to me just for a few minutes. Please. Please. 
Just give me a minute. I'll get us out of this mess. I'm really good at my job. But truth be said is, it's Jesus who's good at our job. Shut up. Okay, so, so what happened was, the commander said, look, my wife's going to die. My pastor said, you should have come to me like a man in the middle of the day and asked me and I'd have come over here and done it for nothing. But treating me like a cattle and a less than human being, it really rubs on my Christianity just a little. <laughs> it makes it harder for me to want to help you because of the way that you've, you've mistreated me. But they did that to my master. His name is Jesus. So I'm assuming you work for the master that did that to him. His name is the devil. He said, now nah, this is how it's going to roll out. I'll do it. But let me tell you what it's going to cost you. Your entire army is going to get saved and they're going to do it right now. Okay, all right. It is cool, but these guys can tell you in their theological stuff, all these pastors that are here, there ain't no way that's legal. Not in anybody, not the ultra-conservatives or the ultra-liberals. No world makes room for your kind of, that kind of aggression with God. My world does. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain why. Because if you watch these rape, rapers and pillagers and violators and entitled people who don't have to live under the law like us, you're gonna figure out that it's a demonic force guiding these people. And you need to understand your power is greater than theirs. And it's in Jesus. It's in Jesus. Don't get this 70-year-old man running now. For y'all that's worried about me breaking, I just ran my 56th marathon five days ago and won. I got across the finish line. There you go. So I'm not going to break. Okay, good for me. Yay. I'm ready for another one. <laughs> okay. I really like health. I like it. Okay, so here's the commander. Ready? Now, this guy ain't saved, and you think that we're rough. These guys are rough. He pulled his 45 out of his belt, put a round in the chamber, and he said, come here, captains. They come up. He pulled his gun up on them. He said, who's not going to get saved? And they said, boss, we're all getting saved. <laughs> and he goes, now how many of your men are not getting saved? Boss, they're all going to get saved. So they came up and uh, our pastor's sitting there humiliated and on and on. He preaches Jesus to them. And I know it's not conducive to y'all's love angle thing. But it really is. Because if you love somebody and you're annoyed with them, you owe them the truth. You don't owe them a lie. Because if, if you can't fulfill what you're lying about, why are you saying it? But if you're willing to die for the gospel and these people done made you mad enough to say it, you, you just go ahead and take the bullet. But, here, this is pretty awesome. I'm on, I'm, you're not going to even, y'all don't even believe it in the first place. Uh, but I do, that's why they call me a believer. <laughs> and so, this guy goes, he goes to me, he goes, Brother David, you got to go out there with me. I said, where? He said, you know the commander of the of the of the rebels? I said, yeah. Well, 
Well, him and all the rebel group got saved. I said, I don't believe you. He said, yeah, but his wife's sick and you got to go out there and pray for her. I said, I ain't going out there, you knucklehead. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Them guys, some guys will kill us. How much did they pay you to turn me over to them? He said, they didn't. Now, I've had this guy since he was a teenager, you know, and a long time, and he's always been faithful. And, but somewhere along the trail, you have to trust people. And I find that's hard to do. Don't you? Say yes. All right, I need a hold. Oh, Mom, please. Muy amable. Gracias, hermana. All right, and so we're going along, right? I said, don't you get too far from me because if you're lying to me, I want to get a hold of you before they get me. And that, that's another statement that I didn't have to say, but it's really becoming for me to tell the truth. I need to, because the way you think, you shouldn't hide it. And you used to hiding things to make people think that you're good. When the, clearly the Bible says there's none good but one. So, we on the same page yet? So I'm taking away your goodness and I'm going, to, I'm going to make you vulnerable to your need to the mercy of God. That's what I'm working on. <laughs> All right. So, so I get out there. You should have seen this camp. I mean, there's some real soldiers there. These guys live off the jungle and there's guns stacked up everywhere. and it, it's, it's awesome, but it's scary at, at the same time. And so here I am, and his commander rolls up on me, still got his 45, and I'm not worried about that. I have one myself. I'm not worried about those guys. I'm not. I didn't have it on me at the time because I just don't carry them when I work. And, so, and I work, work is talking for Jesus like I don't have one now. That's what I'm saying. All right, and so... He said, I've been hunting you for a long time. I said, I understand that. That's why I didn't want to come here. I didn't want to reveal myself to you because God's been protecting me from you. He said, Brother David. Now, my, my brothers call me Hermano David, not, not the enemy. He said, Brother David, my wife's going to die if you don't touch her. I said, well, I heard the story how all your men got saved. He said, yep. He forced us. I said, okay. I said, I'd have done the same thing. He said, I know, you taught him. I said, yep, it's true. I said, where's your wife? So we go in this hut. It's a stick, bamboo stick thing with grass roof, no you know, dirt floors and all that. I go in there and there's this naked woman laying there. Oh, man. The sores, the gangrene, the boy, it was rough. She was in a bind, you know? So what do I do next? Pray, brother. Okay, so don't be so chipper about telling me how to do my job if you're not going to come help me do that, okay? All right. And so I go in there, and there's this woman, but this, this lady... Her stomach's already hard. It, she's not going to make it. It ain't going to happen. She's dead. We get around her, you know, and she's embarrassed. You know, she's naked, and we lay hands on her in Jesus' name. And, and then the, the commander says, I need you to pray for my men. I said, all right. So he gathers up this, you know, couple of hundred soldiers, and we preach to them. Wham! Just like we're doing right here. Just preach Jesus. Jesus, what? Just as straight, boom, no shadow, no turning, no nothing, straight, straight at them. And then one of those guys stand up, I said, who is he? He's, he's one of my captains. All right, what do you want, sir? He said, I want you to lay hands on me and pray for my family as well. I said, all right, I'll do it. 
So we spent the next two or three hours praying for all these soldiers. And then we spent the next two hours hiding their guns. <laughs> Meaning we dug holes in the ground and put these things away, and they quit being a rebel group. All right. All right. Now, let's jump forward here till a few days ago when I saw them again. I was with them just a few days ago. Same people. They're just old now. Seven, the seven captains of that commander, all are now pastors of their own churches. How about that? For y'all that don't believe God can save people under stress, when we make stress, put stress on them. All of the people in their army still with us as well. And all their families. Do you hear me? These people are deacons and elders. And so how do you get that kind of a God to work? And the lady... One month from the time we prayed, she's up, totally healed, nursing her baby, fine. Now, even greater to me, because I'm a great grandpa and I get all, I'm not a doctor, but I get this stuff. She's had four children since. That's impossible. There ain't nothing about it. None of this is legal. Boy, I like it, you hear me? It's right. It's right for us to go there. It's right for us to go into the stress, be put in jail by them. It's right for her to have this problem. It's right for us, even though they kidnap us. And, and, and it's right for us to do these jobs. It's right to muster the courage to do it. Y'all listening to me? All right. All right, I told you a story. Let's read a Bible verse, and then we'll do another story, read another Bible verse, and I'll, I'll probably be bored by then and do something else. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Sheta bata na la. I'm after fire. How do you get an army of rebel group? Y'all know how scary, y'all hear it on the news, how scary they are. How do you roll up into their territory and have enough gumption to stay, even though they're pounding you, putting you in jail, beating you, and, and stay anyway, and then God give you all of them? I need you to want that. Say it. I want that. that that's the kind of Christianity I want. Say it. In Jesus' name. All right. Let's read a Bible verse. I got like four or five of them up here. I don't know how many of them I'm going to get to, but it'd be nice to you if, I, if I'd if i take the time. I might not, though. All right, let's, let's go over to Mark. It's Matthew, Mark in the New Testament, chapter 10. In the New Testament, is Amplified okay with y'all still tonight? Y'all all right? All right. Thank you. Mark chapter 10, verse 34. Mark chapter 10, and verse 26. Now, I need you to read all of these, the couple of chapters forward, a couple of chapters afterwards, get the whole concept, whole idea of what Jesus is teaching here. But I'm not going to do it with a couple of verses, all right? And it says in verse 26, 10, 26, they were astonished out of measure. Say it with me. I want to be astonished at the words of Christ and the power of the gospel. Out of measure. Astonished. I want to stay that way. In Jesus' name. Yeah, there we go. Say, who can be saved then? Look, look, all right, in verse 27, it says, Jesus looking upon them said, with men, see, it's impossible. Y'all believe that it's impossible. You, you do love Jesus. I am not qualifying you. That I'm not telling you you don't. 
What I'm telling you is you need to show it. You need to exemplify yourself that Jesus is king. And the way the world's turning is turning against God, not you. It's God thereafter. Now, now look, and Jesus looking upon them said, with me and it is impossible. But I want to, that's not my key. I know your impossibilities. What I want to do is work on what we can do. That's what I do. I want to lift you up. I don't want you pushed further down uh, by me knowing what you can't do. I already know that. But how do you roll into a rebel group and win? You don't. Not without heavier weaponry and a few casualties. But there's another way. With men it is impossible, but not with God. Hallelujah. For with God, say it. All things. Say it. All things. Say it. Confess it to your airwaves around here. All things are possible with God. Okay, Mr. Andy, if you will, throw that young lady up there and me hugging and all that, please. I want you to look at this girl right here. She's, she's an ex-Amish girl. She's, uh, uh, she li they live now in Virginia. Uh, when I met them, it, we were in, here in Pennsylvania, uh, a little bit further east and south. And uh, New Holland is the name of the place. And I'm there, uh, God somehow has opened up the Amish and Mennonite community to me. I don't even know why. Uh, I have no idea, but we have now have seven churches with them that I'm helping with. Uh, and, and they belong to one. Okay, now, the reason she's up there with such a smile, again, it's like last night, it's, it, this young woman here, uh, because where I met her was in Abbottstown, PA. The other side of, uh, what's the name of it over there? No, this side of Lancaster. Yeah, south of Harrisburg. Yep. Yeah. Harrisburg is south of Harrisburg in east. I don't know the name of it. Abbottstown. I just know I was in Abbottstown. And there's a golf course close by. But I don't like to golf. Okay, so, okay. And so I'm up in there and the place is jam-packed. And, you know, and, and since I have, a, I, I, I don't know why these folks uh, appreciate us. Uh, but they do, and they come. Whenever I'm over there in that part of the world, they come in like lots of families of them come out. And they're large families. And so I'm standing up there with, you know, with some leadership, and uh, y'all know Todd White? Yeah. Okay, it's his home church. And so I'm there, right? And Todd's there. We're all there. And we're having a blast. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and so it's good, all right? And uh, so I noticed all these Amish start rolling in. I told Pastor they'll be here, and they, so he had a place if they wanted to sit and all, on and on. It's awesome. Say it's awesome. It is also close to there, yes, right close to there. Okay, and so here we go. Then I saw a family come in the back. The mama has got this girl, but there she is, 15. But whenever I saw her the first time, that's, that's 15. When I first saw her, she was 12, and she had stage 4 leukemia. And she was skin and bones. She was not going to live very many more days. And so the mama comes in, and, and, and I don't know what y'all know about the Amish or the Mennonites, and not personally, I don't care, and I don't want you to tell me. Thank you. I don't, I don't care. I like them, and so that's why it's going to roll. So there you go. So I go there, and I saw her, and the family's there, you know, and, and it's, and it's in, their, in their world, the, the, the women don't interact with uh, strange people. Men, me. 
So I'm over there with my wife and, you know, people, and, and here comes this lady, and I saw her. She looked at me, and, and, you know, and I know their rules, and I'm not going to break them. I don't care. I'm free. You see how free I am, man. I'll call you down right now. I'm free, but, but, but I don't use my freedom as a whip or a hurt or an abuse for other people, regardless if I believe them or not. Do you hear? Hear me? My freedom is between me and heaven, not as a weapon against you. Okay? All right. So here she comes, and I told my wife, come here. So Miss Hogan comes, so I'm hiding behind her. She's little to me, and I'm trying to hide. You can't, I can't hide behind her. <laughs> so here comes that mom up there with that skinny little baby, and she looked me right in the face. And this is so illegal in their world. And she thrust that child at me, and I took it. Her, you know, like 80 pounds or 70 pounds, 12-year-old, skinny little bone thing. And she said, my daughter's dying, and you're going to fix her. And she just turned around and walked off. Uh, there you go. Okay. Now, you can, you can look at that up about 25 different ways or probably 50. And I told my wife, I am going to accept this in Jesus' name. And so we put her close by, and whenever I was talking and walking and preaching like I do, I put her, because they put up, they have an altar thing, and they put up all these clothes, like thousands of garments, and we pray over them, and miracles, and on and on it goes. And I went by her every few times. I wouldn't say much. I would just say this, Jesus. Just touch her and move on. Just keep talking. Go back by, touch her, keep going. And then, you know, mom comes, gets her daughter, they go home. I, I don't have much interaction with them other than I touched that daughter a few times and then they picked her up and left. All right, now what, y'all, But this is pretty bizarre. So there, here we are down in, in Virginia, it's another group of them, and so I'm down there with them and I like it. And so... Pastor says to me, he says, remember that girl? I said, I do. What happened to her? He said, you don't see her? I said, of course I do. So they went and got her, and there, there I am, shocked, of course, blessed, because she's totally healed of leukemia. <laughs> right I, I like that. See, I like that. It's the fire of God, it's the name of Jesus, it's the gifts of God, it's the mercy of God, it's the anointing of God, it's the forgiveness of God, it's the honor of God, and it's the whole ball of wax fixing somebody, and I like it. Because that girl right there now has a life. And you, you know, whether she's Amish, Mennonite, Catholic, Mormon, I, you know, who, I, just let me do my job. Just bring me that baby. You know, everybody tells me, how do you know she's going to be healed? All right, I'll take that question. You take mine. How do you know she's not? Amen. You tell me. What demon spirit spoke to you and told, me, told you she's not going to be healed? i already been told by 75,000 people how I'm not good enough, but I'm going to tell all of you one time, Jesus is good enough. Amen. See, we got to beat that stuff. <laughs> Man, I like it. I like it, little girl. I like her family, man. And, and now God's done opened up for me. They have a big, uh, a whole, I don't know how many thousands of families down in uh, Belize because they got, they got run out of Germany. They got run out of Russia. They got run out of Canada. They got run out of Mexico. And now they're in Belize, thousands of families. And they invited me down there because fire broke out amongst them and they want me to help them. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Say it. That's awesome. Yes. 
And I'll be down there in a few days. It's, it's going to be pretty nice. It is cool. I like it. I like their work ethics. I like their food. I like them, period. So there you go. Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I like healing them because they, cause they go off in, in, in German and I can't understand them. And I like that even better. So let's read another Bible verse. It says right here, it says, uh, it says, with men what? What does it say? It's impossible. Say it. With men? It's impossible. Say it. And so you're going to fuss at me because I'm trying to make it possible. And you don't like me because of my character, my attitude, my aggression, my way I talk, my, the way I dress. Uh, got a hat on, got too much beard, and my wife don't have the right clothes on to suit your little fanciness. Well, here's what we're going to do. Just keep your cancer. How's that? That good? You good? I know you're not good. I know you need us. So we're going to put up with your foolishness to try to get our hands on you because we can help you. And that don't make us good people. That makes God in us good. You listen or not listen? Yes. I got lots of experience with this. I know what I'm saying and doing, okay? All right? Just need a couple of minutes. Because I'm finna shock your wires again. <laughs> and it's on purpose as well. So let's jump over to Luke chapter 1. Do a couple of verses so you can say, well, he established it by the mouth of two or three witnesses, I guess. I guess I better pay attention. You think you're so awesome and you can only quote 20 verses and you've never healed anybody. Wake up. We need Jesus. We don't need smartness. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. It was just I was down there in Belize a few few months ago, and this dude grows up on me, you know, and he's 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 Amish, you know, and he comes up and he, he's looking at me, you know, and, he, and you know he's I can't speak English, said, all right, I can't speak German, so uh, I asked him, do you speak Spanish? He said, I do. So there you go. <laughs> so we started speaking Spanish to each other. All right, so he's got this big farm, and he's, he's out there, and he's working, and his implement rolled up on him and crushed all the bones in his upper body. Okay, been to the best doctors. They got some money. They've been to the best doctors all over Central America. They, they put his bones back together, but they didn't heal all of his cartilage, and all of, it, all, all of his muscle groups are not hooked together, and it's, he's in pain, and so... My turn. And I said to him, I, I don't want your cows or your money or your land. Let me tell you what I do want. I want your loyalty to Jesus. Okay? Uh, let's, let's read this. It's, it's uh, six verses. Are we okay? Can I read this to you? Okay, Luke 1, 31, Amplified. This is angel talking. Listen, you will become pregnant. You will give birth to a son. You shall call his name what? Jesus. All of y'all that have other names and other gods that you serve, you're wrong. The angel of the Lord said that his name will be Jesus, and he it is who will save the people from their sins. That's what the Bible says. All right, let's just keep going here. Verse 32, he will grant... Uh, he will, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father. Say, God, thank you for giving Jesus the throne of David. Thank you that he will rule and reign over us, that he is a just and holy God, and I can serve him and trust him. Say it out of your mouth. Holy Ghost. He will reign over the house of Jacob throughout the ages. Say, thank you, God, for a plan. And his reign, there will be no end. Thank you, I can believe. 
I can believe. And it's not temporary. But it starts today. Yeah. Thirty four. And Mary said to the angel, How can I dude, this ain't right. I've 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 not had sexual relations with anybody. I've not been intimate with anyone. And the angel said to her, Now you listen to this closely. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Say it. No. I'm not asking any of y'all to get pregnant. I'm asking all y'all to get filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit come, on me, come on me. Because I want to be a believer. I want to walk in the energy of God. In Jesus' name. And the power of the Most High, say it, power of the Most High, the power of the Most High. Overshadow, me. overshadow me. And so the holy, pure, sinless, say, I want to be that with Jesus. I want to be holy. I want to walk in purity. I want to be sinless. In Jesus' name. What that's born of you will be called the Son of God. And look what it says, 36. Listen, your relative, Elizabeth, old age, has conceived also, is now the sixth month, who was called barren. Say it with me. When Jesus comes, barrenness leaves. When Jesus comes, barrenness leaves. Say, I don't want to be barren. I want fruit of the Spirit. In Jesus' name. He is the promise. And God's word will be fulfilled. I will not be barren. I will be fruitful. Verse 37. It, it, it coincides with Mark 10. Look what it says. For with God nothing. Say it. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, Nothing is, ever is ever impossible. And no word of God, word of God shall, be without power shall be without power or, or impossible, of impossible of fulfillment. I ask for God's word to come to me and fulfill God's true plan for me. And I take away all barrenness from me. And I ask for the fruit of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right. Okay, Mr. Andy, if you would put the guy up in the pajama looking stuff. All right, this is where I live. This is the native, the, the, he's an Aztec Indian. And it's called a calzon. Uh, it's been for 2,000 years. The men have wore that right there. They used to grow their own cotton and weave their own material, but nowadays it's done by machine. All right, now I need, you to, I need to explain to you, this is my friend. His name's Antonio. Okay. Now, when we were younger, he's, he's the same age as I am. He just don't get old looking like me. His hair is still black. The Indian people don't get gray hair till about 90. And they all have all their teeth and on and on. So, okay. So, Hermano Antonio, I heard he was sick. Okay, so his wife sent me a message on a piece of paper. It's called a recado where I'm from. There's no text. There's no internet. There's none of that stuff where, I, where we are. So you have to do it the old-fashioned way. But since she and the wife can't read or write, you have to go to the school teacher in the village. And the school teacher writes it down, and then they send a runner. So they send a runner to me. 
It says these words, I need help, Brother David. My husband is sick, and that man's my friend. Now, let me tell you why. Because 40 years we've been walking together, he and I. I found him on the side of a creek uh, going to his cornfield one, one day, and I preached the gospel to him, and he listened to me. He brought me to his house, and his whole family got saved, and then we started a church in his village. All right, so the power of God showed up. A lot of people got healed and on and on. Okay, now, now where, we're, where he's sitting there, and where, when I took that picture, uh, um, it's 40 years down the trail that we've been together. And I don't know what you're hearing in all these stories, but I, I have this thing of longevity with people. I'm what's called loyal. And that's another term you need to pick up from the Holy Ghost, is loyalty. And so, uh, Antonio, I didn't know it, but he had gone to work in his cornfield. Look, that man can grow uh, corn on this concrete floor right here. I, listen, you, the, man, that man, he's not a good preacher. He ain't ever raised the dead, but he keeps all his, the army flowing with food. That man can grow food. And he loves us, and he grows corn. You ought to see him toting 150 pounds of corn down off the mountain just so we can have a campaign and have tortillas. And he's old. And he loves to do it. But he was out there working and he put a, there's these things called bullthorns and they're poisonous. It went through his foot, stuck in the side of his Achilles. All right. Um, it got infected. Yeah. Okay, now, they carried him to the doctor. They pulled out all the dirt, you know, the thorn and that and that, but it was too late. It already got gangrene. The doctor said, nothing we can do. The only thing we can do is cut it off at the knee and hope it don't go, had him spread all, uh, set up camp somewhere else because uh, you can't stop gangrene. You can't. Y'all might can up here, but where we are, there's no facilities. Okay, so... They sent me a thing, and they said, we need to pray for Brother Antonio. So we went there. I sent some people. What does he need? Now, you're going to laugh at this, and you're gonna, I'm going to get new emails from some of y'all cussing me out, how stupid I am, and all, on and on, while you sit there on another computer and watch your pornography. Keep it. It's just going to get thrown in the trash. You understand? Okay. So when a, when a woman walks up to you and says these words, you ready? My husband is dying. His foot has rotted off and he's got gangrene. I need a new foot. What's your answer? What do you say? What theology do you have set up? What plan is there in the modern local church for putting organs back in and feet and arms back on people. I'm going to help you with that if that's all right. What did the angel tell Mary? For nothing. All right. Now, you're going to have to come to grips whether you're a Christian or not. Because if you actually are, tell me you're a Christian, you're telling me that you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And that he actually sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us and that he is the Son of God. Okay? So I need to discuss a few things with you if that's all right. So what do I tell the lady? What do I tell her? I don't have any problem with you not going to tell her. I've never seen you down there. I know you're not going down there. I know that already. You're busy hustling a dollar. Oh, and by the way, how's that going for you? A couple of you in here probably made a little bit. rest of you are in debt past your eyeballs. That is how they're controlling you. I'm help managing 7,000 churches. How much money, woman, do I owe? Nothing. 
Live within your means. Not what your neighbor thinks your means are, and you have to satisfy them by acting like some foolish thing. Your credit cards, you've got 10 credit cards and they're maxed out, and you're in debt, you'll never get out from under the, just the percentages of it. You've never heard a preacher tell you that. And I apologize to you about that. You need to be debt free so you can at least refute me. How can I get away with talking to you the way I do? There's got to be a reason. I don't owe any bank. There ain't no taskmaster in my house. There's no one I owe that owns my bed. How do you think I can be so noisy? I see a couple of you mad at me. Look at me. I'm old. Bring it. Let's look at, let's look at finances. Let's look at marriages. Let's look at kids. Let's, don't, don't worry about church stuff. Let's do normal life stuff. I, I, I just need y'all to hear me. I, you, you, you bought into a system that's broken and, and you're sitting there cursing the system and you're paying more at it. Ah, you're irritating. Stop. Pay your way out and stay out. Live within your means and trust God and your means will grow. That woman said to me, I mean, she looked me right in the face. You came here 40 years ago. My husband brought you to my house. I made you some tortillas and I fed you some caldo soup. I made you some hot soup. Uh, they ate chilies. And you ate it. And she said, I understand. You don't owe me anything. There's been so many miracles. She said, but is your God the same today as he was when you first came? See? Now... I believe that warrants an explanation. <laughs> Donna, Donna, when you first started the game and you were so excited about Jesus and then things turned against you and you quit, never is right. You know what my response was to her? I bet you don't know. I bet you don't know. Let me pray, sister. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Doubtful I'd ever say that. Here's what I said to her. I'll be right back. I got to go to the tool box. Got a, I got a tool in there. I got an extra foot. Now, that right there seems sacrilegious and against godly and against all standards of everything else. Problem is, look on that right left, y'all. You see that foot? He's got a, he got a new tennis shoe on there. That's the foot. His foot had rotted off, off, off his leg. Uh, now I say, you hear how quiet? Now I got a man. And that's where I want the game. This is where I get up there, son, and we do a grand slam. Because the fire of God will back me. It grew that man. That man's my friend. And that woman loves me. She needed her husband making food for them in the field. Do you understand? There ain't no social security. There ain't no government help. There's only the man with the machete on the, on the property fixing cornfields. And he has to be able to work. That's where the gospel comes in. That's why you need help. Most people in this room are leaning on the government, and then you'll sit there with the other side of your mouth and curse the same government. If you're going to take from the government, don't curse them. I don't agree or disagree with you taking or not taking. Just don't curse them if you're going to take it. Pray for them. Bless them. You clear? All right. Woohoo, baby. We may have to leave early, buddy. Let's do one more verse. 
the man got a new foot, it's on his right side, and, and you know, I heard about it, I, I never did see him personally, all my people did, and all this, and so we're up on a, on a mountainside, doing a campaign, there's about a thousand folks there, and I'm sitting there waiting my turn, you see how I, I wait my turn, I walk around, I look at everybody, how you doing, what's going on, it's like I'm not, I'm not in on the game, the deal is, I am on the game. You think you know how church should run, but you can't do the job. And in my pickup truck out there, I got extra parts for you if you need them. And it's not because of me, it's because of the guy I work for. His name is Jesus, and his kingdom will have no end. And with him, nothing is impossible. I'm either right or I'm not. If I need to sit down, just let me know. I'll grab her hand and we'll be out of here. You tell me. I don't mind. I'm telling you. You get to see a few of these miracles like this, it makes you like you see me. It makes you not willing to listen to anybody's excuse. And try to talk you out of some foolishness that the world has talked you into. And then you call yourself a Christian, but yet the world runs your house. We've got to break with that. I need help, please. Y'all are awesome people. I've been around you a lot. And I like you. I'm one of you. We've got to do this. We can do this. But we need help. Let's go back to Luke. Luke 3, and I'm going to stop with this. It's uh, 9 o'clock, so we're going to pray. Because I was a little bit behind schedule yesterday. I'm not going to be today. I'm one of them guys. Sure am. So here we are, Luke chapter 3. <laughs> and so Jesus is teaching. Let's do verse 14. How do you say e adelante in English? Verse 14, e adelante. How do you say that in English? And on forward. Does that sound right? Well, it's, Spanish is coming. I can't. Okay, Luke chapter 3, verse 14, and some more verses. It's still amplified. Those serving as soldiers also asked him, what shall we do? Because see, Jesus had got into their house. He had got into their goodies. And, and, they, and he, they were feeling conviction. How can we be right? We want to be right. Some of you are mad. Some of you are feeling condemned. But a handful of you, that's the ones I'm after, feel conviction and you want to do this. That's who I'm after. And it says right here uh, in verse um, 15, no, 14. And the, the soldiers said, what can we do? And, and he replied to them, don't demand or enforce by terrifying people or accusing wrongfully or always being satisfied with your rations and with your allowance and with your wages. In verse 15, as the people were in suspense and waiting expectantly what, what John was going to say next, and everybody reasoned and questioned in their hearts whether John was the Messiah. See, you need to be so awesome and so good at your job that people believe more of you than they should. I'm not kidding you. You should represent Jesus so good that they start to wonder if you might not be an angel instead of a human. I mean it. You need to be, I mean that. And not with pride, not with wanting men's praise, but with helping people. What is it like now for them? I'm sitting at a conference up on the hill, up on the mountain, and there's lots of people there, and all of a sudden I look across the thing, and I see that man right there. He ain't got no shoes on, and he's dancing. And I'm looking at him. He ain't got no foot. How's he doing that, man? I jump up, I ran over there, and I'm just looking at him. Antonio, where'd you get that foot? He said, he said these words. It was in your tube box. <laughs> His wife told him what I told her. You, listen to me. They believe me. 
says, well, you do well to listen to me. Jesus wants to help us, but not the current standard. It's his standard that we have to submit to. Hello? It's Jesus' standard that we have to match. Not some rules and regulations of men. Now, look, look what it says in verse 16. And Jesus answered them, oh, look, I baptize you with water. I do that. Don't you guys too? Y'all probably do too, right? It says, I baptize you with water, but there's one might here. Say, Jesus, Jesus. thank you that you're might here. And you're coming. You're coming. Thank you, mighty one, for coming. He's coming. <laughs> you think I'm going to go out this far on a limb and him not show up and back me up? Cut the limb. I won't fall. Jesus is king and the word of God is impossible for it to lie. Ask Antonio. That's all I ask you to do. Just ask Antonio. God grew that man's foot back. We got doctor's reports. We got pictures. We got man. We got stuff. And why don't I put it up there so you can be satisfied that I'm telling you the truth? I don't give a flip if you believe me or not. I just don't. Jesus is king, and that's all I got to say to you about it. I don't want you mad at me, but I mean, it's going to happen regardless of what I say. So let's just make it a good one, what you say. <laughs> I bless you, I do not curse you. Because Jesus is coming. There's one mightier than I coming. And I'm not even worried to undo his tennis shoe. <laughs> it says right here the strap of whose sandals I am not fit to unfasten he will baptize you with what say it Holy, Holy Ghost and what Fire. say it I want the Holy Spirit, I want the Holy Spirit. and I want the fire, want the fire. 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 fuego del Espíritu Santo poderoso es nuestro Dios Poderoso nuestro Dios, poderoso, Holy Ghost, Shalabata. Brother uh, uh, Andy, you can, you can uh, skip Brother Antonio out of here and put that Jesus King back up. I like that better. Holy Ghost. Do you see why my life is awesome? I got to go in there, the first American these people's ever seen. They would come up and just try to pull my skin out, white skin. They ain't never seen it before. My family comes in with blonde hair. My little kids had blue eyes, blonde hair. They pull their hair out of their head because they never had a blonde hair. See, they haven't seen one. And, and Jesus healed all these people. And now I get to grow them a new foot 40 years later. But it turns out it was just in my toolbox. It was actually God that grew it. Isn't that right? But you got to carry it in your toolbox. In other words, you got to believe that it's part of the package of God because you pastors, y'all know, when God said, let there be, when did he say stop being? See, that's important to me because I believe in creation. I believe in people that have been hurt, offended by hell, had pieces removed or replaced, and they're hurt and they can't get away from pain and you can pray for them, they can get new ones and be fixed. Amen. I believe that. But it's going to take us wanting to press in to the Holy Ghost and fire. Because there's one coming that's mightier than us. Whose shoes are not even worthy. Our, we can't even undo his Jordans. Or it depends on what area you're from. Maybe it's wingtips. <laughs> but some of y'all, I see, wear those Skechers slip-ons. <laughs> so there ain't no worry about undoing them, is there? <laughs> you see how much fun I have, right? So I bless you in the name of Jesus. 
I want to take a few minutes. I see they pulled out a couple of rows of chairs so we could have some more room. And I appreciate that. Thank you all. So I need you to come up here and organize how you want it because we're going to try to do healing, deliverance, Holy Ghost baptism, salvation, and fire. 